kind of into a couple of other things because uh, so many clients would like to know more about you. So tell us a little bit about how you got started with MagnaPen. How, you've been with MagnaPen for how long now? Uh, well, I've been marketing it for 46 years. It'll be 47 years in June. Oh my God. Um, so Seems so, like yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, tell, that, that says you love what you do. Yeah, it's fun. Yes. yes. So, so how did you get involved with MagnaPen? How did it start? I fixed Bill Johnson's photocopy machine. So Bill Johnson, just so that... Well, uh, uh, yeah, most, uh, most people know that he was the president of, of Audio Research, the founder of Audio Research. Um, this was before Audio Research Days. He had a little hole in the wall shop in South Minneapolis. I was out of uh, Bible college. I was like, no, I don't want to be a minister like my dad. What am I want to do? I don't like this. I was a lousy student. <laughs> All, I, remember my, I remember my mother, uh, she was shocked that I could remember this. You know, 10, some year later in life, I said, Mom, do you remember the side door of the parsonage when I came back from hunting again? And she said, Wendell, you'll never amount to anything because all you want to do is play. <laughs> and at the time I was in my 60s, I said, Mom, I'm in my 60s <laughs> That's all and you I'm still playing. <laughs> I play with toys. Yes. Yep. I have my own, I've got five patents and other uh, gun-related inventions. And I've got a new idea for how to keep old fingers warm in Minnesota winters. And I, I get to play with all these cool toys. So it's like back, so so how? So I fixed his photocopy machine. Okay. It was running poorly, and, and if people that knew Bill Johnson in those days knew how he could be very cautious and skeptical. It's like, um, you're here to tune up my photocopy machine? Yeah, just a courtesy <laughs> call. And I looked around like, whoa, there's a huge pro. I recognized electrostatic speakers. He had this huge. Uh, electrostatic prototype array made by Ron Taves, it's RTR. You pro you probably yes. remember RTR. Yes. It's long gone. But and I saw these monster tube amps on the floor. And this was a little hole in the wall stereo store in South Minneapolis. And I like whoa. I was just getting into audio. I heard KLH nine electrostatic, right. and, right. and like this is so. Bill was like suspicious. <laughs> So I got his photocopy machine tuned up, and then he introduced me to all this equipment, and we became friends. We started play he loved to play ping pong and tennis. We became friends, and I subsequently moved back to Oregon, where it was, which is my stomping grounds, where I'd prefer to be. Minnesota's great, but it's not Oregon. And um, Bill called and said, um, I've started a new company. It's called Audio Research. I need a sales manager. Uh-oh. I'm a lousy student, right? <laughs> I don't like to study. So it's oftentimes who you know more than what you know. And I thought, oh boy. I remember my aptitude interest exams. My highest aptitude was electronics and mechanical. My lowest score was sales. <laughs> he wants me to be the sales manager. And I thought, <laughs> So you started I've, with you started with audio research, basically. Yeah, yes. So I took the took the off. He said, "Don't worry, I need somebody I can trust. Okay. I'll teach you the sales part of it." And actually, I still don't like sales. I like marketing. I I I respect your marketing. By the way, you are easily the most uh, creative of all the dealers that I've uh, dealt with in 46 years. You really should be in marketing and just mm -hmm. get out of retail <laughs> and get in marketing. You're, I mean, you're so creative. Thank you. Yeah. And I enjoy marketing because it's strategy, right. where sales is, Very I got to yeah. I gotta convince you that what I'm trying to sell is better. And I really, I'm kind of a duck out of water. When it comes to that. So how long were you with Bill Johnson? Well, that was a five-year contract between okay. uh, where it was a synergistic relationship between MagnaPan and Audio Research. Where wait a minute, where did MagnaPan come come into the? Well, picture? Bill, uh, to unbeknownst to me, Jim Whiney was a customer of uh, Bill Johnson's in that little hole in the wall shop. So Jim Whiney was the founder of MagnaPan. Yes, yeah. So he uh, he got it helped MagnaPan to get by the, their relationship with Audio Research. 
Um, it helped Magnapan get started, and of course it made audio research electronics sound better, so it was a win-win. And then when that, th then when that end relationship ended, that contract ended, then I went to work for, uh, for Magnapan. Right. So Jim saw something in you and said, "Come on over. Come over well, to the dark beca side." Yeah, we had <laughs> become friends, and I liked mechan. I li always liked mechanical things. Um, that's where I'm most com most comfortable. 